Half in the bag. Fuck movies. Hello and welcome to Half in the Bag. I'm Jay. And I'm Mike. And we just saw The Last Stand. Oh. Hey, Sheriff. Almost didn't recognize you in plain clothes. Well, it's midday off. Should be a quiet weekend. We have a situation. The Last Stand is a new action film starring an old leather skinned corpse. The premise is simple, a small town sheriff and a few of his officers are the last chance to stop a dangerous drug cartel guy from escaping across the border and back into Mexico. The moral of the story? Stay true to your convictions, revenge is always okay, and shoot guns everywhere. Why not? Mike, what did you think of the last movie we saw? The Last Stand was uh, forgettable. To me, it was forgettable. There wasn't really much that kind of engaged me, any kind of characters. I didn't really care for Schwarzenegger's character. Hmm. Have you ever cared for a Schwarzenegger character, though, in a movie? No. Not counting the Terminator movies, maybe? No, but uh, old Schwarzenegger movies had real explosions and violence. Yeah, in those regards, this was better than those awful Expendables movies. Uh, for me, I, I enjoyed the movie more than I thought I would. I kind of pictured it, it's a shame we saw it in a the theater, because I, I was picturing it like the type of movie that we watch when we have a group of friends over, and we're just like constantly yelling at the screen during, during the boring parts, like, come on, get out with it, and then cheering during the horrible, stupid action and bad comedy, and it felt like one of those sort of like fun, bad movies to me. Um, it, it's hampered a bit by the fact that it does have some digital blood explosions, blood a spurts. I, it, in the movie's logic, the human body is filled with a red mist that vanishes. Yeah, I, I, I think I some of that, that was actual. It, it was weird, uh -huh. it was confusing, because there was a mix of, unlike the Expendables movies, especially Expendables 2, where every blood spurt is a, is, is a very obvious, cheap plug-in effect. Uh, this one felt like it did have some actual blood yeah, spurts. Yeah, I'm sure it did. I don't uh, know. I, I, I feel cheated when I go to see an action movie and you can tell all the gunfire is fake and all the blood splatters are fake. Yeah. It's like when you go watch a, like, like a, a horror movie and the blood splatters are fake. That's what you go to watch those movies for. I go to watch an action movie for action. Mm -hmm. um, and some of it, I mean, some of it was okay. I, I mentioned to you the, uh, there's a chase scene at the end, uh, Schwarzenegger is chasing the drug cartel guy. They were having a car chase through a cornfield. And um, you know, some a lot of it looked um, digitally enhanced, and I could be wrong completely. I don't know, but um, I'm thinking if you drive a car through a cornfield and you're running the camera over it, and it's not going to look super exciting. And I could tell like a lot of it looked fake, like with the tires are kicking up extra dust, extra debris flying up, and all that looked kind of phony to me. See, I didn't notice that. I definitely noticed the end action then fist fight scene where it looked like the room when they're on the roof in oh, the room. green screen? That all, that all that bridge stuff looked like completely green screened. Why would it need to be? I, because they don't want to shoot on a real high bridge. But you don't have to. You just put the bridge on the ground and film at eye level. Yeah, the but then you have to film outside. Here you can film in a nice, uh, comfy, warm studio. I guess so. It wasn't as bad as the end of the Twilight movie where they're no. obviously not <laughs> running around on a frozen lake No, bed. and that's the frustrating thing about this movie is that I would have liked it more if there were more practical stuff. Yeah. But like you mentioned, the uh, the, the cornfield chase scene, I liked that idea. I liked that as an action sequence. Mm -hmm. And there were real cars in it, and there were real cars yeah. smashing into other real cars. Yeah. And I liked all of that stuff. I thought it was fun. The yeah. movie takes a long time to get going. The first half of it was like, I don't care about these FBI guys. Like, just get the 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 villains into the small town and have people shoot at each other. Yeah. And that's when it got fun. We've got a cartel with heavy firepower headed towards the border. And there's a strong chance they're coming your way. I've seen enough blood and death. I know what's coming. Schwarzenegger plays a small town sheriff. Uh, and, and the FBI is, uh, is taking a drug cartel guy to, they're moving him from one location to another and he escapes and they, they fail at numerous attempts to recapture him. So Schwarzenegger's small town of um, something something Arizona right on the border of Mexico is the last stand before this guy gets back into Mexico. Dangerous drug cartel guy. Yeah. 
He shot a uh, loving FBI character that we knew for 15 minutes. So, uh, and drug cartels are genuinely bad. Even though I love drugs. Wow. And you gotta get drugs from somewhere. So I really actually don't mind drug cartels. Mm. I kind of hoped he would get back into Mexico and continue to move drugs across the border. Because I mean, where are you gonna get it? I guess we were supposed to care that he got across the border and I guess we were supposed to care that Schwarzenegger stopped him. We were supposed to care because the movie gave us five minutes to like a, a, uh, a cop named Jerry who had dreams of getting out of the small town into the big city. That was our only motivation. Um, and that's what I mean by, by kind of by the numbers predictable script because you start the movie off and um, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of conveniences all over the place. Schwarzenegger used to be, he's not just a, a bumbling small town sheriff, mm -hmm. he used to be a narcotics guy in Los Angeles uh, who did this big drug bust. Yeah. Convenient. Uh, the guy in their prison cell is the boyfriend of one of the cops and he, uh, he used to be an Iraq war vet, or he is an Iraq war vet. Now he's got a drinking problem though drink and he causes problem. problems yes. in the small town. So yes, he's going to prove himself and be used in the end when they need people to help stop the drug cartel. Um, uh, oh, and then Johnny Knoxville plays a kooky guy, and anytime you have a kooky guy in a movie, they've got to wear the hat with the ear things. <laughs> I thought Johnny Knoxville was very effective as, uh, in a very sort of subtle and, and sensitive performance of a mentally challenged person. So he, this character uh, conveniently has an arsenal in, in, in his barn because he likes guns. So, Wow, is that going to come into play later? And See, then, you're saying all these things as if they're negative in a movie like this. No, it's a fine, fine script. Okay. It's by the numbers. Like I said, it's, it's fine, but you know, that's not the payoff for me. The, the, being invested in the story isn't the payoff. It's the action, and the, I thought the action was just subpar. Just subpar. Schwarzenegger looks like a very, very old man. Yes. And, and now... You know, we, we talked about this before, like there was, there's three periods of Schwarzenegger. Early period, which, which ended in um, uh, kind of the, the, when he's in the downslope of his action career with movies like End of Days, um, Collateral Damage, when it's like, okay, it's getting tired, you're getting old. Then he becomes the governor of California, that's phase two, and now he's back and it's a nostalgia thing. Yeah. And third phase is nostalgia. So it's like, okay, yeah, he's uh, 108 years old or whatever, <laughs> and he, he, he looks incredibly awkward when he's firing the Gatlin gun, like Helen Mirren <laughs> firing the Gatlin gun, and he's like, <laughs> so uh, gra Grandpa's firing the machine gun. These are all the reasons I liked this movie. But it, as it, like a guilty pleasure bad movie. I have to say his acting is hilariously bad. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's gotten much worse and it oh, didn't yeah. start from a good place to begin with. Well, that's what's funny is he's such an interesting movie star. And I yeah. would call him a movie star. He's not an actor. He's a movie star in like yeah. the traditional sense of like everybody knows who he is. Mm -hmm. There's very distinct traits about him yeah. that everybody knows and everybody likes him but he's never, ever been any good. It's not a tumor. Put that cookie down! Give this people air. But he has some sort of charisma or something that you're drawn to. Donna! Even though he is old, in this movie, it was still sort of nice to see that in a way where it wasn't precious. Like it wasn't, this whole movie was very sort of stripped down, kind of an old school sort of 80s style yeah. action movie without it being self-conscious about it or, or um, really playing up the, mm -hmm. the cheap, easy, precious nostalgia like yeah. those god-awful Expendables movies. I'm not gonna let that guy come through our town. You know how to fight. Very nice. How are you, Sheriff? <sighs> Old. I don't know what I was supposed to get out of this movie. I, it was not fun. It okay. was just a I, movie. I had a lot of fun in the second half. The first half was boring as shit. Once the action started, I had fun because one, uh, it's, it's fun seeing Arnold Schwarzenegger old and saying these, well, the, all the catchphrase, the attempts at catchphrases in this movie and the attempts at comedy were horrible in a way that was charming to me. Like you have the old lady that shoots, yeah. it's like a groaner, you know, things like that. Um, we have all these these wonderful character actors doing really bizarre performances, like Peter Stormare as the the second main bad guy. Like, what was that accent? What was he doing? It was like 
foreign, but with a like American mm-hmm. Southern twang. Like I don't know what he was trying to do, and that was amusing. Luis Guzman shooting people with an Uzi uh, was well, entertaining to me. Gun. Or a Tommy gun, sorry. Um, uh, Harry Dean Stanton shows up to be old and cranky because that's what Harry Dean Stanton does these days. Yeah. Uh, all all these things. I, I thought the movie was cute. I, I wish we weren't watching it in the theater so I could laugh out loud at the things you that weren't supposed to be lo- funny. Did you find it funny bad? I only found, uh, sh- like, I-, I found it not not funny bad in the way that a movie like, you know, The Room is just completely inept. Sure. I found it uh, funny in how sort of, like, simple it was, if that makes sense. Where it's like all these all these tropes, all these tropes that you don't see anymore because most movies are so overblown, yeah. overinflated, yeah. self-conscious, or they're just like superhero movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, every action movie is about people trying to save the world. And, and there was a nice simplicity to the fact that this movie ends with just two guys fist fighting. Yeah. And I liked that. Yeah. I liked those aspects of the movie a lot. Um, I might be building the movie up more than it should because it's not a great movie, but it was uh, sort of refreshing in how sort of simple and dumb it was. I, see, I didn't, I guess I couldn't tell if if they were going for like cute nostalgia kind of stuff, like with with the old lady, with with um, the the people that refuse to leave the coffee shop, I'm like, is it are, are they a, is it a genuine attempt at humor or is it a genuine attempt at nostalgia kind of action movie stuff? I don't know. It all fell flat for me. Well, one thing to note in in regards to the tone and what it was trying to do is is uh, we should mention that the film was directed by a South Korean filmmaker named. And this is his first American movie. Uh, he made a really great movie called I Saw the Devil, uh, if you haven't seen it. It's a really good sort of revenge movie, violent revenge film. Uh, a horror film called The Tale of Two Sisters that's really good. Quit title dropping, you neck-bearded hipster. Is that what you are when you recommend good movies? Yeah. That automatically makes you a hipster? Yeah. I don't understand these things. I just like watching movies that don't suck. Continue. I, I don't know, I kind of get the vibe like when we talk about a movie like Russian Terminator where it's like a, a foreign person trying to make an American style action movie. I, I kind of see this as being, you know, this director has probably seen all the 80s action movies, all the old Schwarzenegger movies, and is trying to make a movie like that. So I would say it's a, it's a sincere attempt at making kind of an o- older stripped down action movie. I, I Bad s- comedy and all. It looks like nothing <laughs> sensational. It just looks people in a car, action shots, people firing. There was nothing that I, stood I out. thought there was a lot more energy to the action scenes that you could follow than a lot of action movies nowadays. It's not the shaky cam. We've, we've complained about that a lot. Yeah. You know what's happening. And I, I, I don't know. The only thing that took away from some of the impact of it was the, the CG gore. Yeah, like there's a, a moment that would be wonderful in an, another movie where a guy explodes and his little arm comes down and flops oh, around, but it, it was looks, very looks, obviously CG. Terrible. Yeah, and it takes you out of it a bit. I, I don't even, I, I mean, I don't think the action scenes were that well done mm. in it, you know, just, it just looked like a generic, like made for TV movie. There was nothing sensational or exceptional about this movie hmm. in any way. It was, it was a f- acceptable, action movie. I watched it. I I got (laughs) nothing out of it. Speaking of blah, we should mention that the actresses in this movie all look exactly the same. They do. Every single female character in this movie looked like the same actress. Mm -hmm. There's the FBI lady that's in the car Mm -hmm. with uh, the drug cartel guy, the waitress in town, and the one female cop. Especially the waitress and the cop. I was like, does she work part-time at the diner? And then part time as a cop, but then it turned out it was two people. Maybe those are the type of ladies Schwarzenegger likes to bang. Mm. He's like, cast her and her and her. They all look like my maid. Go, go, go! Bring everything you got. Who the hell I? I'm the sheriff. It's so, so, Jay, would you recommend the X-Men The Last Stand? No. Would you recommend The Last Stand? I I would, I would. Probably not in the theater. Uh, as I said at the beginning uh, of this discussion, this is the kind of movie you, you drink beer and watch at home with a group of people and just laugh because it's just so dumb. But it's charming. It's charmingly dumb. 
Well, I, I will disagree. I, uh, I got nothing out of this other, other than by the numbers movie, action movie that didn't really engage me. Mm. The action wasn't particularly exciting to me. It was just sort of filmed. Schwarzenegger jumps out of a window with a bad guy and shoots him in the head as they're falling down. Stuff like that is fun. Computer generated blood flies. You're like a like a like a Grinch. I, I yeah, I kind of am. You're like a Grinch. I, I yeah, my heart is black as coal. I know it, Jay. I know it. <laughs> um, no, I, I I love action movies and I love I mean I love Judge Dredd because uh, Judge Dredd was great. I, that was genuinely good. I though, enjoyed the premise of that. Yeah. This the premise was okay. Everything about it was just okay. It was like a flat line for me with a mild heartbeat here and there when I laughed at Arnold Schwarzenegger's acting. Mm which is just like him going blah, 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 blah. It's, it's incredibly bad. I, I would recommend it on that aspect. <laughs> go, come for the first half an hour and just watch him try to say lines. <laughs> wow, you're looking Jack. You've been working out. that followed have never been explained. A Haunted House is another one of those spoof movies. You know, those. Ah! It's made by Marlon Wayans. You know, him. He makes those spoof movies. This is another one of them. You and your ghost balls. I got some for you. Thankfully, they no longer shoot these movies on real film, or else we'd have to lament the waste of precious film stock on this piece of garbage. The only precious resource wasted was people's time, energy, effort, money, and reputations. Jay, I know what you thought of a haunted house. Mike, I know what you thought of a haunted house. I would not recommend a haunted house. Neither would I. Thank you and good night. Well, let me ask you a question. Yes. This is one of those movies that comes out in the early months of the year. A fuck you, it's January movie. Sure. Obviously terrible. Yeah. You see the trailers and you say, oh, it's one of those. Why did we see it? Why were we in the theater watching a haunted house starring Marlon Wayne's and co-starring Farts. Well, quite frankly, Jay, um, I heard good things about Mama. And uh, I, 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 I didn't care to see that when I saw the, um, the trailer. I was like, uh, you know. So I, I saw this, um, uh, I, I, I of course hated the Paranormal Activity movies. And I saw that there was a new spoof movie out and I have never seen one of those spoof movies. Scary movie, uh, 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 disaster movie, all, all those, those spoof movies never seen one okay so I, I i figured you know let's uh let's give it a shot and i'll see if anything in it uh makes me laugh and uh i wanted to kill myself <laughs> in the theater i i literally wanted i wanted to leave numerous times uh, but what i really wanted was earplugs <laughs> Well, I have seen those other movie movies. I've seen other modern spoof movies. The, the modern age of spoof movies started with Scary Movie. Mm -hmm. That was the one that sort of has, has led to what this horrible plague on our nation known as spoof movies has become. Mm -hmm. And this movie is right in line with those. Uh, so I had no interest in seeing it. Uh, not even in a, oh, we'll go see it and make fun of it. I knew exactly what it would be. And the first thing I said after we got out of the movie was, we could have just, we could have not seen the movie and done the exact same review that we would do if we had seen the movie. Yeah. It's exactly what you would expect from a film like this. Yeah. It's the most cheap, obvious, uh, lowest common denominator attempts at jokes. I, I, I was trying to figure out I think Marlon Wayans is a simpleton, 
uh, who happens to have the Wayans name, and he, you know, he has clout and money and power, and there didn't need to be a script, which was the one thing that that how it started off. It's yeah. like we don't need a story because those paranormal activity movies don't have a story. It's the girl moves into the house and things happen, and then demonic noises, and we're just gonna have a series of scenes where we um, spoof. Uh, things that have happened in other horror movies, like they they went all over the place. They did The Exorcist. They did the recent um, The Devil Inside, the connect the cuts, connect the cuts part. Yeah. They did, um, gosh, a, a lot of other things. Um, the Last Exorcism was in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so all that stuff kind of it was mainly paranormal activity spoof with a sprinkling of other kind of references. Yeah. But there were no specific jokes. There were just um, just kind of. They, they would bring in actors, Nick Swardson, uh, Cedric the Entertainer, and they just kind of said, here's your character, say weird things. And, and Nick Swardson played a, a psychic uh, who was a, a homosexual. And the joke was he was attracted to men. The Todd Packard character, I forget that actor's name. He will, he will forever be Todd Packard. <laughs> David um, Koechner is his yeah, name. Yeah, he, he comes in there and... Uh, you know, he he's starts racist. Making, he starts his thing is he's racist. Yeah. And there's this really, really awkward moment where he's like, I want to say the N word. I want to say the N word. And and uh, Marlon Wayans is like, No, don't do that. I'll punch you in the face. And then it just ends. No, that's the end. If you say the N word, I will punch you in the face. Yeah. Awkward yeah. silence. Cut. End of scene. Right. Right. And that felt like something that came out of like a whole afternoon of improv yeah. where they're just saying weird things, and then you just do lots of quick jump cuts and reduce the scene down to. Oh, he's racist? The best parts you have. The best parts you have. How far are you gonna go to get this demon out? I'll do anything. What is this supposed to do? This just got weird. Oh. Well, let's, let's assume that there was a script. Maybe we're wrong about the improv thing. We really don't know. Okay. Uh, is that worse? Yes, because a script you, you you write before you start filming and you have time to think about things, which is why if, if there is a written by credit with Marlon Wayans and somebody else, yeah. which is why I think if there was, if those were the lines that they gave Todd Packard, like yeah. here are lines, um, yes, it's much, much worse. I can see them, uh, Todd Packard, Nick Swartzen, Cedric the Entertainer, who, who he was the funniest one out of everybody. Um, Cedric I, the Entertainer? Yeah, I can see them showing up and going, we don't have a script. We're, this, we're just fucking around and we're gonna make a whole shitload of money. Yeah. Just do something funny. Um, I, I, can, I can forgive them yeah. like, for not having enough material to work with and for just not having a good day uh, at, at doing improv. But when you have a script ahead of time where you're like, I'm gonna write these funny scenes, it's, it's the, um, the complete lack of effort yeah. and, and the complete lack of intelligence that, that really sinks this movie and movies like it. Welcome to the Terror Dome. Come on, Jay. Hey. Ray Ray. What you typing for, Keisha? We thugs. We can't be on no TV. Can't wait to get my hands on this food. Show yourself. No, don't do that. Come on, Jay. What happens to your furniture, cuz? I will say, for the majority of this movie, like, there are other actors in it, but a, a large chunk of it is the Marlon Wayans show. And it's, it's like watching somebody just horribly embarrass themselves for 90 minutes. Yeah. There are other actors in the movie, but he over, overshadows all of them. It's like, like watching the Star Wars kid video. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, Jay. What makes a parody funny? I, I was kind of thinking about this in the, in the movie theater. Um, take like Weird Al Yankovic. Like, what makes his parody songs funny? Yeah. Like a virgin, he turns into like a surgeon. That in itself isn't funny. It's it's the lyrics that he, he adds to it that yeah. are clever. And it, it's sort of like, okay, it has the funny beat, and these lyrics are clever. This movie, it's it's our movie looks like paranormal activity, but nothing in the movie is clever. There's no, no clever lyrics, per se. There's yeah. no clever script. It's just fart. Yeah, yeah, well that's, yeah, I, I don't think parody in and of itself is terribly funny. Mm -mm. Uh, I, 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 it's not a, a genre I've ever really connected with. No. Uh, but I like a lot of movies that would fall into that, like like Airplane, like Naked Gun actually, you, there's the joke you always bring up from Police Squad, the series that Naked Gun was based on. Who are you and how did you get in here? I'm a locksmith, and I'm a locksmith. 
you don't have to have any connection with police dramas, police shows, to get why that is funny and clever. Mm -hmm. It's a funny joke. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's a framework. You take a genre or you take a style and that's your framework. Yeah. But you have to have actual constructed jokes within that yeah. to, to hold it all together. Yeah. Unless, you're, unless you're mocking the genre. Because you, take a look at Mel Brooks's Spaceballs. Mm. Um, that's another thing where it, it's a little mixture of both. It's kind of, there, there's like, they, they spoof the, uh, the, the famous uh, uh, Star Destroyer crawl. And it, you know, it goes on for a little while, but then they take it to the extreme yeah. and they have the ship going on for 10 minutes in the opening credits. That's a spoof. Yeah. That's taking some, some material and making fun of it. This movie does, uh, A Haunted House does a couple of things like that, but, but not really. Um, the, the, I actually, I would say the one thing that maybe would have been funny in this movie that wasn't because I was just so bored and tired was when Marlon Wayne's character realizes that the house is genuinely haunted and his immediate oh, yeah. reaction is to pack up and move out. What are you doing? Bitch, there's a ghost in the house. Deuces. That that was a legitimate spoof joke. Yeah. Because you, you'd say, in this genre of haunted house movies, why don't they just get the fuck out right away? Instead of staying there and dealing with the ghosts and just get out, move out right away. And, and that's what reaction people have. And then when they spoof that, that's what we're gonna do. Right. If, if you were to write a spoof movie about paranormal activity, like what do you do? I, I guess you would, you would kind of make fun of all the, all the elements in it. Yeah. The, the, the idea of, like they had a scene, there, there's uh, the Todd Packard character comes and he has the other guy with a camera. And I'm like, okay, this is gonna be a joke. And it didn't turn out to be a joke. It turned out to be another reason for them to have a camera angle, which is something they do in those movies. Yeah. But you could turn that in itself into a joke. Like, yeah. Who's got the camera? Like, who? we have six cameras going and this one's filming this one. And, yeah. and you could have a, a, a funny, like, we didn't catch it on film. This amazing thing happened. Who Who was supposed to be running the camera? Right, right. Well, Bob, where did you leave the camera? You know, yeah. the, you, you, the, the logic of the movie is that there's cameras everywhere. You can make a joke out of that. You yeah. can make a joke of the ghost doing this. Yeah. Well, another thing that people always bring up with the, the found footage type movies is why are people still filming? Mm -hmm. You can do something with that, yeah. like, like uh, uh, some dumb joke about yeah. why they're just filming everything yeah. all the time. If you, you just want to... to think about it for more than two seconds yeah. and not slap your script together well, in a weekend. It's easier to slap in racist, racism, misogyny, homophobia, and all those kind of like lowbrow, yeah. um, that and fart jokes. Just th throw, in, throw in all the the easy to do stuff um, on top of this premise. Yeah. You know what? There is some dark energy over here. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's still oh, it's still oh, it's Why do you have your hands on my balls? I'm protecting them from spirits. So Jay, would you say the humor in this movie is pathetic, desperate, uh, sickening, lowbrow, bottom of the barrel, uh, disgusting. Uh, yes. Every yes. other adjective yes. in the world. And there are, there are things that sort of advertise themselves as that, as like, that's the point. Yeah. Like, it's offensive, in your face, and that type of stuff. Um, but this is one where it's just, yeah, just really, pathetic is the best word to describe it. Yeah. Where it's feeding off of stereotypes where the joke is not anything clever. It is, ha ha, laugh at him because he's gay. Yeah. Which we kind of touched on when we talked about uh, uh, That's My Boy, the Adam Sandler movie. Mm. This is another case of that. Yeah. Uh, even worse, yeah. if that's hard, if that's possible. Yeah. There, there were other elements in this. There's, there's racism humor. Well, like... the thing with, with the racist stuff though, is you can always use the excuse, it's funny because you're laughing at the racist. Yeah. And that's different than the gay character. Well, this had the, the gay jokes, which I, stuck out to me as the most offensive um, because there was no like, yeah, the, the Todd Patrick, Packard character's ignorant and he's making racist comments, but the, the joke in the Nick Swardson character was that he was gay. Uh, and, and of course, every homosexual that, that finds another male attractive instantly just starts trying to grab their crotch or to make references about giving them oral sex and grabbing their ass and all that. See, I think you're yeah. giving the movie too much credit. I think the joke was that every homosexual wants to have sex with every man Period. Oh, okay. Was it I just... don't think it was. I don't think Nick Swarson's character was necessarily attracted to Marlon Wayne's. 
he was Marlon Wayans was just a man. No. So he obviously had to act like yeah. a like a like a horny weirdo. Okay. Okay. And that was the joke. Oh, it was even worse than I thought. Yeah. It's not um, perceptions of stereotypes. It's not perception of this or that. And and it's that's the joke. Mm -hmm. And it, it's so so sad. <laughs> <laughs> sad and pathetic is the best way to describe it, as we've said. Yeah. Well, and it can't it can't be interpreted in any other way. No. It it like there are some jokes that are just like. You're not getting it, and and one thing that sticks out to me is um is Borat. Everyone loved to quote Borat. Yeah. But when Borat came out, there were um there were people that were angry about all the Jew jokes in Borat. What is this man? This is a Yamadai Jew, and he's working on a piece of jewelry. Why you have a picture of a Jew? Because I'm Jewish. <laughs> And they're, they're saying, like, the Jews are going to kill us in our sleep. They're, they're going to turn into monsters. They turn into cockroaches. And they're throwing cockroaches. money at oh, the yeah, cockroaches. Yeah, yeah, right. And and then they, <laughs> earlier on, they have the, the running of the Jew. <laughs> Where the Jews have the horrible face. And, and um, it, it, the funny part wasn't laughing at Jews. The funny part was that some people actually think that yeah and it's poking fun at the racist and not making fun of a race right and that was that was the the um the smart part about it yeah and in this movie there is nothing smart about poking fun at the the homosexual character it's just poking fun it's it's i don't want to say bullying Ooh, that makes me shiver. It's, that's it's, such it's, a buzzword right now. It's true, but that, that's kind of what it is. It's just making fun of somebody for, yeah. for that reason, and there's no other layer to it. I have a lot of powers all over my body. Well, if you had to say, if you had to say positive about this movie, Jay, what would it be? Uh, it's only 80 minutes. I have a little something to help alleviate some of that stress. Okay, I'll do it. Movies like this, and, and even more so, the the Aaron Seltzer, something Friedberg movies. Those are the duo. They co-wrote Scary Movie, and then they went off and made Date Movie, uh, Disaster Movie. They did, did they did they do Vampires Suck? Yes, they did that too. This I will say, a haunted house is less obnoxious than those Fried, Friedman Seltzer movies. Yeah, yeah, those are the worst things I've ever seen. They're not movies. We've talked about that with like Jack and Jill, where it's like, what is the cutoff for what can be considered a movie? Mm -hmm. Those are not movies. Those are, hey, look, it's the Incredible Hulk. Oh no, he just stepped on Paris Hilton, and Paris Hilton said, that's hot. <laughs> and, then, and then one of <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. This is those movies. <laughs> what? What did, did your brain? <laughs> it's like I totally picture it. I can picture that happening. And did that happen? I don't know. It probably did. <laughs> That's what those <laughs> movies are. Are you gonna curve the bullet or what? Hello. Let's go back to my hot tub. You can suck on my. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Amy Winehouse. Nacho! Hannah Montana's dead. Hey, Hancock. Hi, Mystique. It's your buddy, Dr. Phil. Hey, look, it's Miley Cyrus. And her backup singers are the Chipmunks. <laughs> She's my sister. Oh no, one of the chipmunks just got beat up by Iron Man. <laughs> you just got pumped. My name is Harry Potter. I am Beowulf. Hell no, Kung Fu Panda. Facebook. Indiana Jones. I am the Guru Shitka. Captain Jack Swallows. Oh, I am Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> you should write one of those movies. I could. You'd, you'd be a millionaire. Just write one. We'll call it fart. <laughs> <laughs>
call it Poop in the Pants, the movie. Yeah, yeah. And just to have all these pop culture references, and yeah, you'd, you'd be a millionaire. Yeah. Well, welcome to the Terra Dome. Come on, damn. <laughs> Man, that breath is kicking. I can only imagine what the kitty smell like. So now we're going to introduce a new segment to Half in the Bag. Uh, this is this is new because we've done a lot of episodes of Half in the Bag at this point. Yeah. So we want to introduce a new segment called uh, Jay and Mike attempt to forget everything that they just saw in a film mm -hmm. by bludgeoning themselves in the brain. Yeah. That's the name of the segment. We have never done this segment before, so we're going to begin with a, with a substance called styrofoam, which is significantly lighter uh, than a brick. Yeah, but we want to start off light because who knows what... I don't know if it'll work. Okay. I don't know if uh, direct... Uh, force contact with the skull will remove memories or not. I'm not a doctor, as they say, um, but we're gonna find out. Okay. okay. Fuck. Oh. Fuck. <clears throat> Get it out! I... Get it out of your head! I'm like uh, getting the feeling of coming in the gym. I'm getting the feeling of coming at home. I'm getting the feeling of coming backstage when I pump up, when I pose out in front of 5,000 people. I get the same feeling. So I'm coming day and night.